a music streaming platform is actually a stock market mm. every conversation i had with keenan he was always trying to be something bigger mm. than he than he was in that moment it's like an it like it's a domino effect yeah. you know that like yeah. that is triggered by one thing you know um i have whp eventually meant as a cast in your vest mm. you know what i mean mm. but what if i told you that i have the power the people will listen to me the, I, the, the power of black people is in them understanding that they need to make the rules, not get something else from somebody else. Mm. I could tell you what I was learning, yeah. but I can't tell you what I was feeling about people, about, about people actually going. What, oh, really what were you thing. learning? Spread the fire. Welcome back to SMWX. And today I'm really excited to be joined by Siabonga Slika Metane, innovator, entrepreneur, and one of the most important people in South African culture over the last, I would even say two decades at this point. Thank you, bro, so much for joining us on SMWX. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, this this is the office interview, not the balcony interview. Listen, Hashtag. I'm mad at that. You know, <laughs> I know about this. You know what I mean? You know, forget a studio. Make hey, the, ma like, make the office work. Hey, you know what I mean? Hey, make it work. Let this. it sweat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Welcome, bro. Congrats on the new book. Thank you, bro. Uh, Thank this you. is a really fascinating read. And so important to actually document what's been happening in in culture in South Africa yeah. through your lens, because it's it's interesting to me. Like I live in the academic and the literary world, where everyone just documents everything, and in the cultural world, which has, if anything, a bigger impact, we actually seldom document the story that brings us to you know these amazing events in South African history. Yeah, I think that was um, that was really what triggered it. In fact, those are. The, in, in not in not exactly the words you said. That's what like uh, Helen said to me. Mm, you know, mm. she was like Helen, the writer. Yeah, of course. Um, she basically uh, approached me and said, "You know, we were in a session and they never talked about the work that we did, Squatter Camp." Mm. And you know, my view again was very like, and if they don't remember, they don't remember. It is what it is. Yeah. You know? um, and she's like, "You got to write a book," and I was like. Helen, who writes a book? You know, who <laughs> yeah. writes a book about, you know, except Cesar? You know, Cesar's yeah. got opinions that he wants to document. Yeah. We want opinions that we want to just say and run away. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? exactly. Um, and I said, who writes a book? You know, and she's like, mm. no, um, you got to start writing. I mm. said, but who? And I started complaining. He said, no, I'll do it, you know. Hmm. And I was like, uh, okay, well, I don't know if I've got time, but like, you know, um, my my way of building things that are not in in your day-to-day -day schedule mm. it's like investing in your future is like always allocate some time in the week interesting to do something that you don't normally do hmm. so i literally said okay i'll give you three hours a week um to just so we can sit yeah um and literally she she followed up she followed through hmm. and every week we literally sat for three hours she'd sit down I talk my story, she'd literally give me feedback. So if it wasn't us sitting down, then like she'd give the feedback or I'd be in a meeting. Mm. But what we did, we literally like booked them throughout the year, the calendar. This literally took wow. us three years. You so know? You, you booked it like all the meetings? Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah, we booked it as that's a just meeting. a fascinating yeah. insight on how you get stuff done. Because you like, you get stuff done. Bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So, so we, 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 as I said, you know, it's like, uh, it's something that I never cared much about, mm. but mm. it's something that I felt was valuable, right? Yeah. Um, but then you, your day to day is stuff that you care about. It immediately ser serves your 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 your, your life, yeah. um, your family, and just just your ment your, your your mental health. Mm. Everything you do, mm. but then you do this thing called writing a book that wasn't even in your path. Yeah. So how do you add that in the collection? of your lifetime you know mm, because mm. we all have a, a lifetime and a lifespan and this lifetime is a collection of things you know yeah i was a musician i 
I started an agency, I wrote a book, I, uh, I've, I've got kids. This is a mm. lifetime, they your lifetime hits. Mm. So mm. how do you add the bonus versions that you actually probably weren't gonna add, yeah. you know? So that's how you, you build that. You be, just go, look, I believe I'll be alive in the next three, four years. Let me give it three hours. And that's really yeah. how you build, how you, how you add more in your life, you know? It's, uh... It's an interesting story and I feel like I've seen a lot of your journey because I started listening to Squatter back yeah. in 2004. So just after like a year after Cut and Join yeah, came out yeah. and I've followed your path since then. But there were some things in the early days that I didn't know. The first one, can you tell us the Jam Alley story? Because that's just like a nice little part of what people will get in this book and the things you'll learn about you and your, your story that you wouldn't, you wouldn't know otherwise. I mean, so Jam Ali, people might not even know what exactly, Jam Ali yeah, is right now. Yeah. If you don't know Jam Ali, then like, yeah, we can't help you. It's, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, but what can we say? You know, um, I think Jam Ali was a version of Idols before there was <laughs> Idols. <laughs> Jam Ali was, yeah. true, was the street version yeah, absolutely. of Idols. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag middle center, bro. If yeah, you, you don't know, know middle... Mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> Game show, music show, the works, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Jam Ali, um, I was... I was um, I was actually in, in you audition. So mm -hmm. like in, uh, that's what I'm saying. It's literally idols, yeah. but like, you know, street. Oh, idols. there was an audition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's exactly like the difference with, uh, with reality shows, mm. they shoot their auditions. Mm. So Jam Ali is really the same concept, right? Mm. Auditions, you audition and we're auditioning at an SABC studio. Yeah. There are lines and lines of people who are coming from everywhere in the country, right? So you need to understand that's how big it is. It's just not like, a, it's it's the real idols. It's yeah. like Smash TV on idols, right? It was right? huge. Exactly. So I'm also part of this group of guys who are coming in and, um, and um, I have this instrumental from Dougie Fresh and, and basically I get on and they say, what are you going to perform? Now everybody's performing a song, a karaoke song. And I was like, okay, I, I, I don't know. You know, I'm not about to do anyone's lyrics. I'm already a writer, right? Um, so they play that and I start freestyling and I get a call that, okay, you've made it through. Yeah. Now, again, you know, on the show, you must know the format show. It's like, it's almost like when you get on idols, you go, I'm singing, I'll always love you by Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. um, or you singing, um, um, I'm, I'm about to show my age, you yeah. know, like SWV or something, you know. <laughs> you um, can't just be like, I'm coming with my own song. Yeah, yeah, you know, so they're like, what is it? I said freestyle. And 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 they literally wrote freestyle, <laughs> you know, and um, wow. that was the first time. Do you have the footage? I don't, hey, you know. need to find uh, that. You, yeah. I, I, you know, I know SABC got it. Yeah, I'll speak were, to my SABC connects. Yo, I know, I'm sure <laughs> you do have. But like, it's like, um, you know, they had a, I was wearing my grandmother's, uh, that's one thing I remember. I was wearing my grandmother's uh, sporty that time, you know. Um, <laughs> shout out to Peace, wherever she yeah, is in, yeah. in the skies. Mm. But like, I literally had a, they wrote freestyle. And then wow. Jamali literally took that. And everyone came in and, yeah. and freestyle became the thing. So Amazing. they went from karaoke to freestyle. And, mm. you know, I, I'm just, I'm just great. I'm just like, uh, kind of grateful that like, yo, I was the one that kind of, got the rap like that, mm. you know, cause everybody mm. even mm. rap other people's songs, yeah. you know? Yeah. So Jam Ali literally went on for 10, 15 years mm. and the freestyle, freestyle, freestyle tag was always used, which literally I started at the time, wow. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think th those are, those are part of, it's, it's part of like, um, like just not like, um, it's, 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 it's making your own rules, you know, people like go oh, breaking the rules. And breaking the rules literally is destructive, you know, making the rules is living your life, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I figure I like making my rules and, and those rules will probably apply to other people too. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I, I wanted to break the rules, but as I get older, I realize that I got to make the rules mm -hmm. because when I make the rules, I literally collaborate with those that actually also had made the rules and they don't feel like their rules are broken. Mm -hmm. So that's the mm -hmm. difference between, um, constructively innovating versus, or, or, or what they call it, dis constructively disrupting, you know, um, it's mm. by making rules and not breaking rules, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And Squatter Camp, like, I don't think, 
people understand who who weren't there. Yeah. Like that squatter camp was the first time that hip hop went massive. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you a story. I remember on my way to go and buy Washum Kuku, but I mean, it had been building since Cut and Join. Like when Umoya dropped, it, it was it was just the biggest thing. And on my way to go get it, I, I saw a friend, I was in Santon City at the time. And I was like, I just bumped into a friend and he was like, have you got the Squatter album yet? And I was like, no, I'm on my way to get it. He was like, no, I've already got it. And I was like, he wasn't even a hip hop fan. I was like, if this guy's buying the album, then this is like the next yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. Like, what did that moment feel like in the squatter journey when you realized you'd reached that tipping point of like cut and join, then Umoya, and then it was like a different, a different level. You're now signed to Gallo and like, you're actually doing the first major hip hop um, cultural contribution. You know, when you're inside it, you, you're going through it. You don't know what's happening. You know, you can't point out how you're impacting people's lives because you're inside it, you're doing the job. You know, um, it's almost like um, God literally goes, you can't choose to be monitoring the, how well the job is. I've already done that. I've already, I know your scale, you know, mm -hmm. you need to do the job. I've tasked you to do the job. You're not a monitor, yeah. you know? So what you will do, you'll make the monitoring people kind of like change their thinking. Mm -hmm. You'll literally make new rules with the people that are monitoring. So you can't be focused on, are people seeing that I'm changing the rules? Are yeah. people seeing that I'm this great? Are people seeing that like um, this thing is happening? Mm -hmm. You just need to do your job. Yeah. You know what I mean? And once in a while you get the validation from some that goes yo that's no that mm -hmm. but like you'll get even the people that give you the validation are the people that will literally allow you to move further but yeah. i mean you could have gotten a validation from a corporate company that goes hey we haven't seen this before mm -hmm. and you could have gotten like a random call for a guy you don't know uh from a corporate who's up there and he just called you because we were dealing with <laughs> telephones that time hey, not cell phones hey. just calls you <laughs> and then then you go back to your whole community yeah. um that you spend 95 percent of the time with and mm. you just got this one random call it doesn't hit you as much as your community saying yeah. hey man meaning hip-hop community your hood going oh geez bro you're doing it mm. so that validation literally is almost is, is almost god's sign to say they, they seeing you so you cannot literally try and monitor the whole scale. So I can't even say what the feeling was like. Mm. I can mm. tell you what I was dealing with, the challenges and, and mm. because literally it's, it's, it's the challenges you deal with. Um, success comes with challenges. Success comes with, with, um, it comes with new things you haven't experienced before. Yeah, you got to be learning, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's so much. I could tell you what I was learning, yeah. but I can't tell you what I was feeling about people. About about people actually going. What oh, this is what, what were you learning? I mean, firstly, you know, um, I was definitely. I was. I was. There was a big conflict in my mind all the time. This mm -hmm. was the way I was occupying my mind. Should we have stayed independent, mm. or should we have signed? You know. And I was, I was calculating that if we had gone in, if we stayed independent, because back then mm. a CD was like, uh, like 90 Rand, right. Um, at a store, mm. but we sold it to the store at 45 Rand or 50 Rand. So independently, cause sure. we, we were independent before we signed with Gallup. Yeah. So that means that like 45 Rand or 50 Rand, if I would literally multiplied the, now this deal I've signed with Gallo where, where like they selling it for 45 Rand. Yeah. And maybe at a wholesale price, they might sell it at 40 Rand because they're selling at the price. And then they sell it at that and I'm getting 12% mm. of that, mm. you know? So now I'm getting 12% of this, of this 40 Rand, meaning that like if I sell 50,000 CDs, I'm getting 50,000 times four, like four Rand, sure, basically. Sure, That's like four Rand, 10%, five Rand, 40 Rand. Yeah, like four Rand. So you literally, so I'm like getting, I'm mm. getting like 200,000 or 50,000, you know? Mm. Mm. And I was wrestling with the idea that 
had we actually just like hey, then you had to divide that, rand, divide that by the seven or whatever. Here like. we go. Here we go. I ain't even thinking about <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that. Yeah, hey, that hey. You know, you yeah. know, you know, when you're working out your meds and you can see that you're already on a lot. Yeah, you're now. You just go. I, let me not. <laughs> let I, me not do not the working. So I wasn't even going further to yeah, divide it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least I, our group was three people. Hey, you, you know what I mean? Seven, like you know what I mean? Yeah. So now I, I was wrestling with these thoughts that like um. Because you're young also and you don't mm. understand that like it's your path, right? Mm. So I was understanding wrestling with these thoughts of fifty Rand or forty five Rand times fifty thousand. Did we make the right decision? Mm. Mm. Those were the things that like that was literally occupying a big part of my mind. Interesting. But then I don't have the resources that Gallo has mm. or the networks that Gallo has. So will that 50, would it, would it have really been 50,000? Mm. You know, um, so, you know, you wrestle with all these ideas, but because you are in it, you are not, you don't know that you are actually like the guy or the group that's going to break it for everybody else in the future. Yeah. So you have yeah. to walk that path. You have to walk that Gallo path mm. because once like you convince that corporate guy um who's signing the checks he starts going let's look for another version is it yeah. procure the next version is it selvin the next version do we give amo like a budget like which they did do we give mm -hmm. amo a budget of x amount to produce a couple of artists and then he and and he mm -hmm. get, and he starts and amo's now just getting like a lump sum just off the fact that from the ghetto because mm -hmm. he's going to be producing a couple of artists so it just opens so many doors for everybody but you're not aware that you are actually like um you you are you you actually the sacrifice mm -hmm. for a bigger thing and um what is that bigger thing it's a to move the culture forward and B, it's your people that are going to benefit, whether you they, whether they acknowledge you or not. Sure. But like we, they, they different. I feel that they different. You have different struggle fighters. Really. You you fight in different ways. You fight the struggle in different ways. And if and I believe that like I'm the biggest creative, like you know, like fighter of 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 like, with regards to the mm. arts. Mm. Well, one of the mm. Mm. one of you know for so when we did that with Squatter Camp we were literally fighting for everybody without us even knowing yeah. because that's when double hp is sitting on the shelf in, at emi yeah. and they're not taking him seriously that's when they revisit the conversation with double hp and they go okay we never got squatter because mm. emi was trying to get squatter mm. mm. we never got squatter but you know maybe let's say um Let's, let's let's pay that more attention yeah. to this to to double hp but you've been sleeping with, on him because he wasn't performing as he was mm. so now you know um emi goes because emi is competing with gallo and sure. gallo literally sends that sits, creates the benchmark we like let's literally put a value value to a double hp mm. so they start opening up their eyes like that right uh, ghetto rough opens up their eyes because ghetto rough was always hip to mm, the hop right mm, mm. but like you know double hp literally Matuako, then you know they come with dukes double hp then mm, literally comes with mm. morafe it's like an it like it's a domino effect yeah. you know that like yeah. that is triggered by one thing you know um i have double hp eventually meant as a casp in your vest mm. you know what i mean mm. you guys come through i mean entity mm. through you guys keenan literally like um um i i I think you guys came to my crib. We got a story about you guys coming ah, to your crib I with your dad. I remember that. Yeah, remember you know, that, yeah. I wasn't there. I, yeah. I don't think I was there, but you guys came to my crib with your yeah. dad, you know. Um, but this is the dominant. This is like, you know, when, you, when you're working in the economy and, yeah. and, and, um, and, and the interest rates are high or low, and we got to say we got to bring confidence in the market. This is what Squatter Camp does. It mm. brings confidence to the market. It's possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and, and things start shooting up and yeah. people's careers start blossoming. People start Definitely. investing in it. It's that dominant effect, yeah. you know? Yeah. Do you remember the first time you met Entity, Kian and me and Lanza? It was... Was it in my car? It was in your car, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, 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 got yeah. A, I thought that was it. Yeah. I don't even know... How the hell I got to your school and got that? <laughs> I also don't know. Like, I don't know. No, you know, so there was a guy in in our year called Mtogo. Mm. Mtogo ZC, what was his surname? But he was he was one of the guys in Squatter's little brother. 
Mulefe. Mulefe, yeah, 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 of course. Of so course, Togo because... was in our year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, so it. like we, but the thing is we had a rap beef with Togo because he had another crew. Okay, okay. But eventually we, we resolved it um, and, and we were like, listen, please, can you put us in touch with Squatter? Yeah. So, so eventually somehow Togo got to you and then we somehow got you to come to the school and like, do you understand when we were in the back of your car, we were like, we have made it. <laughs> we like, we were like, we were in the back of Slicker's car, blah, blah, blah. Like after that, that car, like we played it cool in the car, yeah. but we were like, no, nah, like we're done. And then you were like, yeah, you can come to the stew. You can record something. We were just like, imagine high school kids. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think that was one of the, the happiest moments. I remember like Kiernan as well. He was just like so over the moon because we've yeah. been working so hard. Yeah. And it was like the first time we'd ever got to meet with someone who was actually in the industry. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, um, that energy of coming to the stew. Mm -hmm. I hear myself all the time saying that, you yeah. know, to kids. It's like it hasn't changed. Yeah. It's it's just who I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. um, you know, in my prime, I'm always like, and now that we got this, I'm like, yo, we could even help distribute it. So I'm always inviting, <laughs> like, guys, come to the stew. Let's mm. start, let's keep creating. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, that's what life is about. You know, life is yeah. about yeah. giving, and there's this thing that you have that you may be able to articulate that people are going through that you might just need that place though to record it mm. um and that's what like um, music does content does yeah content gives comfort it gives it gives people um um uh, uh perspective it gives people a and i'm just saying even if it's a, a mapiano song where a guy mm. is saying a few words you know somebody literally it touches something you know Definitely. and the more we build things that resonate to our people mm. that literally you listen to it and then what does it look like as a business what does it look like when you grow it yeah. uh, you know the ownership of it you know yeah. um the institution behind it you know a lot of things are, are based on that you know the world is built of creativity and although the 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 other the, the debate with uh with the, our people is that we don't have anything we mm. actually have everything because it's all here mm. it's all creative everything was built with creativity even the stuff that was built by the europeans whether they stole it or not the point is that it's built by minds that are creative sure. and people who align and say let's go you know yeah yeah organically we're creating pianos we're creating this afro sound we're creating mm. Mutsuako, we're creating organically like uh bacardi organically guys are, are creating stuff yeah. still you know Definitely. so i'm saying if you had to if guys are around studios if you had to put guys around tech black guys around mm. tech in Kharankua, in KZN, Gom, you know, mm. then what, what else are they going to create? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, if yeah. you had to make coding as, as a low hanging fruit, as you make like Fruity Loops, which mm. is the, the, the mm. software that makes music or yeah. getting a mic, if you had yeah. to make yeah, you're that You're talking to a Fruity Loops expert here, bro. Ex I, yeah, exactly. I such mean, a good, just, just for you guys, you guys that are that, watching. That's you know, such an interesting, know? because when I learned Fruity Loops, I could then use any other program after that because I was like, oh, this is like, so then I could learn how to edit videos, but yeah. then I could also like write and use other kinds of software. So yeah. it's such an interesting per, let, like economic let, perspective. Let me give you, let me give you that perspective generally, mm. you know, mm. um, 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 what the Asians did like, uh, like a couple of years ago, um, like in the seventies, sixties, eighties, you know, they, they understood that they literally said, they they deliberately like took Asian people to 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 the West, yeah, yeah. because they're like these guys are advanced, mm, mm. these guys. But you guys, you guys get it, you know. Yeah. But you literally need to have their scope. So they literally went and got students to go study yeah. and brought them back. And they they were like, okay, you've been Americanized, but how do you now build it and mm. become bespoke for mm. yourself? Mm. So. What we are doing with music, because it's low hanging fruit, yeah. is that the guys have got Fruity Loops, the guys have got mics, the guys have got pianos, or yeah. they're going to their friend who's got it in the shack, or whatever yeah. the case be. Yeah. And they create a piano, they create this. So it's unintentional, but it's a real thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, where you find that like the master rights of all this piano that's been created is owned by global companies. Mm -hmm. So now bring the tech you know, bring the, bring the coding, bring sure. the coding information, make that information and let a kid go back home mm. and he's got a computer to play around with or he's got his homie mm. or he's got gaming software to mm. kind of mm. build that. What happens is that like, um, you don't, you don't, 
you don't break the rules, you make the rules, right? Because everything that we are consuming, whether, you are, whether you're consuming content, a streaming platform, a la whatever you're consuming, it's some, someone has made those rules yeah. for their people. And what we do, we jump on people's rules. Mm. And then because they put us in the most senior place of those rules, we then think that we're senior, which yes, in a position sure. you are senior, sure. but the power's in making the rules. Mm. And Amapiano's just making the rules. What we did with Umoya, we took hip hop and we made the rules. Mm -hmm. What Mutsuaku did, they made the rules. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so the, uh, the, the power of black people is in them understanding that they need to make the rules, not get something else from somebody else mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. world. We might need finance, yes, sure. but if you can show the audience and you can show who the people involved, mm -hmm. you probably will get a venture capitalist to jump in or whatever the yeah. case be. Yeah, yeah. But we are, we are, even our political fight, in my view, mm. is so based on jumping on people, other people's. We want to own things that are that that the rules have been made by other yeah. people. I agree, and I've always thought to myself, like, if there was going to be a genuine political alternative that came from our ish generation, you would actually be central to that, or minds like yours, because people always go to the political people. But I'm like. No, it, w it would need to be like a cultural explosion. We would need to like understand how to send a message across those channels at the same time as the traditional news channels. Okay. And you can't do that without like minds like yours. Yeah. Um, but I know people are always a bit, even even I am just a bit tired of politics and all of that. But if, if, if we were to be like, you know what, we're gonna do a different, a whole different thing, imagine the creativity that could be brought with like the culture industry and and like a sound political program well you know um and i'm out here like god willingly and you know i we, we were talking about uh we this innate thing in our lives that literally like kind of we know our mortality even mm. though we don't know you know mm. but our behavior on earth makes us know that like we either gonna be here for long our behavior shows that we're either going to be here for long or not right yeah and um one of the things that i started building um um i built like a fintech platform mm, a creators fintech I've seen platform that. i've seen that um where does that come from yeah. i was like well you know um artists are sitting out here not collecting their royalties and they are making they, they they've got money sitting in um in held by labels because they're not collecting the royalties which makes sense mm. but they have vaults of money sitting sure now i can try get all black people to come together but if they don't have money what's the point mm. Mm. you know if they don't have money we can come together but we don't have money to consume we don't have money to invest we don't sure. have you know we we we, we 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 we're gonna get divided if we don't have money yeah because someone is gonna offer system something and she's gonna go you know yeah. i got a kid to feed yeah I love, I love, I'm with you guys, yeah, yeah. you know, power. Let me just take care but of this. But I got to take care yeah, of this. Yeah. So what is the, what is the one place where like uh, artists literally like, where people can come together? Mm -hmm. And the one place currently that I feel is a mind that I've discovered is, yeah. is in music and streaming. Definitely. Music and streaming artists not collecting their royalties. I could be distributing the Entity album right now mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, the Entity album could make like let's just say you could make like six thousand rand per quarter yeah, right sure. i distribute someone else they make ten thousand rand per quarter but if i've got like a hundred of you guys that i'm distributing mm. i start multiplying that and then i go without me saying guys let's come together i go guys how do we take this bulk mm. because if six thousand mm. times a hundred or ten thousand times a hundred is um is um and here's my bad math you know yeah but you multiply that by four quarters also you yeah, know yeah um Maybe let's do this. 10,100, right? Hey, let's do this. That, 10, that, that sounds good. That sounds that's good. That's 100. That's like a million yeah. rand per yeah. quarter, right? Exactly. A million rand per quarter. Um, four quarters, you do it, it's four million rand. Sure. It's unclaimed royalties, right? As a global company, you literally like, you, you just sit there and you make global decisions. You're going to make rules for the global company. Mm. As a local company, I'm calling everybody going, guys, we got 4 million sitting yeah. here. 
um, do we want to go buy YFM? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. do we want to go buy? Do we? Wanna, and I'm not saying YFM is for. I'm just using it yeah. as an example. Now you heard you heard it here first. Yeah, you heard yeah. It here first. But I know KFM is for sale in YFM, and maybe not. <laughs> but example, like you know, you find, but like you kind of go, guys, do we go buy? The, do we mm. go buy this, mm. or do we go show that we've got? Because if you can show you've got an X amount of money, yeah. investors are able to go, okay, we'll get you more money, sure. and it's a group, sure. right? Um, guys, we've got this, or do we put our money in stocks and bonds? Mm, and, mm. you know, what do we do? You know? Yeah. So essentially right now, what you have, you have a bunch of black people who have money and it's not like they don't have stacks, but when they together, mm. it's a stack. Mm, mm. What you start doing now, you are able now to start buying the economy sure. through creativity. Sure. This is why we've got this FinTech platform. The FinTech platform basically is also to allow artists to create more revenue within one space to build their financial profiles. Mm, mm. So the, the idea of creativity, the revolution is not gonna be made by a bunch of people yeah. um, who, 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 who who literally have opinions. The revolution is going to be made by people who have money. Mm. Because when you have money as a collective, you're able to negotiate. Why is the country, the country is being ran by a minority. It doesn't matter how much power we have, we can distract things, we can, but even the guys who have power in masses are going to sit down with the money. Even if the money doesn't get their way, but the money can always say, come, let's have a meeting. Sure, sure. You know, hear us out. And you can hear them out. So right now we don't have money and we keep on thinking that the revolution is going to be driven by a number of people, but the revolution literally is commissioned by money also, mm -hmm. because you know, you are not going to, you can be revolutionary, shout out to you, but like, then you got to hide where you're getting your money from because you're sure. probably getting your money from the people who literally like you are going up against. And, and when we say that the people you're going up against are probably invested in something that you are going up against, but silently because they invest in everybody. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? So, yeah, so it's, it's an interesting point because ultimately, like if we are going to change the country and, uh, on the political, economic, and social levels, that has to be a self-funded initiative. Exactly because otherwise you just get funded by the same interests that you're that you're opposing. Exactly. So the first question actually, many people go to the first question is how do we start a party or whatever, but it's like the first question would be, how would this be sustainably funded? And then we can talk about the offshoots of that. Yeah, so I'm saying we're going to do this through music. We're going to be doing this through collecting royalties yeah, yeah. through the, the, and it one, the artist doesn't need to be involved sure. because if I'm an investor, it's not like Bill Gates is involved in the company. Bill Gates still sells what he sells. Sure. The artist can still be an artist, but they know that like their money is literally like the money yeah. that actually is the spearheading of the revolution. Sure, sure. So the new revolution is going to be through artist royalties and the artist literally just will, will have the warm feeling mm. that I'm actually involved in that. Mm. I'm actually contributing in the ownership, in the buying of this, in the buying of this. Through doing and what I, also I love. Through like, doing yeah. what I love. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this means that like, um, if we, and this is for me, it's, it's, it's almost like the most, it, 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 it's, it, it blows my mind that, uh, that like we are here and that I'm actually communicating this because now you don't have to sell out, mm. you know, mm. to kind of go, I got that because I had to, because the, I was the black guy that fitted mm. it, that, 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 that literally was aligned to the rules of mm. be like, now you're going, no guy, I'm, I, I don't know what's happening there. My managers, my managers literally handling it. I got yeah. my royalties. I know me, all I need at the end of the day, I yeah. need to know that like, um, I get my statements mm. and I'm getting my fair share mm. of this. Mm. That's all. That's all. Which in itself is amazing because people haven't even been getting their statements for a long time. Exactly. And just yeah. that alone is a form of empowerment. So we literally going, not only do I want to give you your music statement, mm. we now going to give you your investment statements. You know what I mean? Mm. We now going to, we, we, you going to see your, the, the, your investments literally making an impact mm. now why do I build a fintech platform because all of a sudden if I've got like if we scaling and we're literally able to kind of build the charges we're able to take back the money to the, the rules that we need to make mm. do you know what I mean so um, so 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 the, the, the reason why the, 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 the West or the corporate world has been uh, has been has been controlling us it's because 
they knew that like you got to make the rules with investment so we they can use us as pawns because we black we this we that sure. and we have a majority and you know and you, you and you just want to appease a political party that's mm. that's that, that that's aggressively saying you got they could do that mm. right but we don't want to we want to get to, and I'm it might not be in my lifetime yeah. but we have to build the structures we want to get in a conversation with the west and the european guys going Yes, but we also have X amount. Mm. So how are we negotiating? Me and you, is are we sitting here as equals, right? Sure. But right now, if you were like the, the global corporate, mm. I'm sitting here as a, I, I just have mass numbers because we black mm. and I have power because like the, the people will listen to me. Mm. But what if I told you that I have the power, the people will listen to me and I also have the money, mm. you know? Mm. So when we sit, we collaborate. Yeah. We work together. Now we need to get South Africa to that point. Absolutely. And I'm saying the guys who have the chance to do that are the musicians. And why is because the system that has been built to pay musicians is passive income. Mm. This is the reason why um, Nelly just sold his catalog for $50 million. This is the reason why Dr. Dre just sold part, part of his catalog. Dr. Dre just sold his catalog for, for, for $250 million. Mm. Who did he sell it to? He sold it to a bank. Hmm. <laughs> so you understand that like banks are saying, I'm saying, I'm literally giving us the code. Banks are coming back and saying that when people are listening to music, um, each time there's a stream of three cents, what is three cents to me? Hmm. But what, how does a bank literally sell you growth? They sell you long-term growth that like this. So for, for if you're going to listen to Caesar like a uh, hundred thousand times, mm. his three cents counts, then Caesar drops another album. Mm. But like now people are going to be playing, um, Lionel Richie, you know, people are going to be playing, um, or resampling things every step I take, mm. every move. you know, like people are going to be doing that forever. And as long as people are doing that in publishing and in streaming, that literally is, is, is a commodity that keeps growing. Mm. So why are banks paying $50 million for, 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 for songs, $250 million for Dre's catalog and Kanye West's catalog? What, why are they doing that? Because they're going, damn, there's actually a new commodity. Why? Because before, when I was selling a CD, when you've bought your CD, mm. the money's done. You've bought your 50 rand, the man, I get paid the money, it's finished. We, sure. That CD literally cannot, it cannot be stretched mm. further mm. unless you go sell it to somebody else sure. for less or like it becomes a collector's. It, it doesn't, mm. like mm. The, the, the rand literally is stuck on the person who bought it last. Yeah. Now you can play my song on a streaming platform once, you play it again, you play it again, play it again, and it keeps on growing three, six, six whatever. Mm. Mm. So now the commodities and the, the streaming platforms are literally like, have and publishing to a certain extent which sure. always been there yeah. are literally building almost like stock markets mm. The, mm. a music mm. streaming platform is actually a stock market yeah. where like um based on if you have the cover on the streaming platform mm. and they're playing you that means that like they're saying that invest in this the most yeah you sure, know sure. and if i play that because i put it on a top list on mm. on, on, on a playlist mm. and it was number one number two that means that mm. that's the stock that like literally is getting priority at this point yeah and with music every week the music gets priority but if you do cultural phenomenal songs like mm. omoya that's always played like a sting yeah. i mean yeah. um like like the classics that galaw has like sure. songs that people are always going to play. Mm. That means that those songs, people are always, are they always yeah. going to keep on growing? Mm, it's a recurring. Yeah. So I'm saying um, my model, I tell people we don't do music distribution. We're a music investment business. Mm. We, I'm not going to give you an advance. I'm actually going to build, build your, b yeah. build your wealth. That's what we're trying to do. You know what I mean? So, um, so today, if you still see me, so if you're going back and saying that that's the revolution, so why did I build a fintech platform? Mm. It might not make sense today, but my fintech platform is going to be the bank for all these, for the user, the guy who wants to go to the party, but we're already selling mm. tickets, you know, we've been testing the system. Mm. So now you could literally be a, a, a musician who literally creates an event on our platform and sells your merchandise on your platform and you could, uh, our, our fi financial platform, and you could be a consumer that signed up that gets better value because you signed up on the platform, you mm. can get the merch. You could go to a party, you could literally like spend using, a, using, using our system. 
eventually the world is going to move. You see, the, the idea in my view of, of behavior, we don't do we don't do business behavior in our lives. We do social behavior. So our, our, our even financial solution needs to talk to social behavior. Sure. But the social behavior, a bank can go, yeah, yeah, okay, let's try to do that. But do you understand what are the, mm. our rules of engagement mm. in social behavior? Mm. When we start showing you our rules of engagement in social behavior as a bank, you go, ooh, we're a little bit too conservative mm. for that. Mm. So that means that, and that's okay. But does that mean that we shouldn't have a system for ourselves because mm. you said you're conservative? Mm. That's where we build the system. So everybody's building creative, but like but everybody's building the creative platforms. You're on this, but like where, who's building the financial yeah. platform? And and that's really the heart of of the revolution. Mm. The heart of the revolution is going to be in music. Mm. The heart of the revolution is going to be in money. And you know what money is. Today, money is like, the, the, a bit, we always talk about white kids with privilege that like, you know, they don't need to get a salary because mm. they're doing this because, you know, their parents, are, so they can sit the, the whole year and not do anything or sure. they can try build a business without a salary because they probably already have an apartment and a car and a house mm. and food that they got from the parents. The first time black people will be able to do that through music because an artist might be performing, doing this, doing that, getting money from other things and might feel that like the royalty money is too little. Mm. For the first time, black kids who have nothing will live the life of the privileged through music if we actually work together and, and, and align, mm. which is, I'm just trying to say we have that chance yeah. for the first time in our lives. And let me say, well, in this generation, I don't know what's happened mm, before, mm. but we have the chance to be, you could be that artist who's performing, who's there, but like you've got money that's just, that you're not collecting. That's for the first time in our lives. And what's going to happen mm. for the next generation, um, meaning that the next 50, 50, 50 years or so, there's going to be more black people who own things across the country mm. or black people who wake up and go, hmm. You know that building is owned by that entity that's a black bunch of, mm. they used to sing blah blah and that literally is going to make you see make you see change your view of culture mm. because remember the drums come from here if they stole the drums from here or they literally exported the drums from here then we also need to the the the, the economical and commercialization of these drums is probably going to start from here and what i'm saying to you today is Watch, you're going to play this in five, ten years. The Probably. world is going to be doing this. Yeah. The world is going to be doing this. The banks already are buying like catalog. Mm. The mm. banks are already buying catalog. The bank that you literally like got a loan from and then you literally like look at music mm. and you're like, oh, I'm an artist, mm. or mm. it's mm. just a song. You literally looking down on it, but the bank literally seeing mm. that as value. Bro, I... I when you say something, I take it very seriously because like you saw the hip hop thing a decade before it happened. And then the online content creation thing, which is booming now, you did it a decade before it happened. So like, okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to watch like, and, and it's so interesting to me that black South Africans economic emancipation could come from music. Bro. Like, wouldn't that just be so poetic? It's not going to be like, yes, we need to create our, our own competitive bank, like traditional bank or our own mining house mm. or whatever. It's like, no, it's going to come from the source of creativity. And that creativity is itself going to be an economic model for economic liberation. And you know why? Poetic. You know why? Um, it's the only God-given thing that we have. Mm. Mm. Creativity. And we do it so like the world Seamless always thing. comes to us for mm. that. Mm. So why wouldn't that be the our our true? It, it's not why. Wealth? It is. Re it, it's this is this is. If you believe in God, if you believe in if if God is punishing us, it's because He's not allowing us. To, we not we not allowing ourselves to see ourselves. We not allowing ourselves to see what we have. We are so immersed in what we don't have. We are so immersed in, in, and I'm going to use the word envy because it doesn't matter whether you're white or black. Sure. If you, if you don't have it and you wish to have it and you're going to be negative because mm. you don't have it, that's envious. Mm. 
I don't care whether it's you you are you are looking at your a black guy who's got a BM in a big house and you're going, hey, lava. Mm. Or you're looking at a white guy, you're going, hey, I belong. Mm. It's still being envious. Sure. How they do it, whether it's through corruption, through racism, whatever, 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 that's FYI, sure. right? But it shouldn't dictate how you see yourself, Absolutely. how you see a communities could see the power that you guys have. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's talking yeah. about what culture is going to do. Um, as much as uh, the access and socialism of, uh, of uh, international stars mm -hmm. has, been so, has been made so easily accessible, you know, um, as you example, where Sway Lee was posting that I can't wait to wait till you hear me on a piano. Yeah. And then you put a Nigerian flag. Mm. That conversation, he could have had that conversation with his folks in the studio and we wouldn't have known that yeah. right? 20 years ago. What, the, what, what, digit, what technology has allowed us, he's a, he can communicate that and we can access him and say, yo, why you got the Nigerian flag? I'm a piano South African or whatever. And then the Nigerians could also go, yeah, but we've approved mm. it, whatever. They but like literally he can see the comments, you know, you know? Yeah. So we've, we've literally like technology has, has, has done that. And bro, sorry, as you're, as you're saying that, I'm just thinking, isn't it more than just music? Cause it's also content creation. Exactly. It's YouTubers, it's TikTokers. Exactly. So like, if, if we can also find a way to monetize all of that, because that economy is also booming now. Yeah, you know? all, all, all of the, all of the, all of that. Um, I'm just speaking about where we are right now. Mm. You mm. know, most of the the musicians are the only guys that literally at times get dual revenue. Mm. You know, mm. where you might find that a, a musician is performing, doing shows, da, 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 mm. and then they've got this passive income coming from streaming platforms. Yeah. While at times with the streaming guys. Um, the YouTubers, the, the, that that income is almost like their mm. core income mm. unless mm. they're doing something else, you know. So the musicians are the mo are the ones mm. that are most likely, mm. you know. Mm. But once you kind of start building this this the, the, this revenue from music, it obviously starts investing in ideas. Yeah. What like this creativity is gonna do? It's also gonna um, bring bring the socialization and mainstreaming of global venture capitalism to more black people because currently it's very locked to a cape town kind of yeah. like group of people or white folks that know better whatever sure. the case be but these ideas are literally going to i mean creativity and and music and the money that it starts building and the potential that it will have mm. and the investments that it will do and the ideas that will come from the, the, the pool of money that comes is going to attract global investors. And by default, we'll start seeing venture capitalism actually um, um, mainstreaming the investment into um, um, like black, 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 mm. start black, start mm. black, black initiated businesses. I mean, sure. we're already seeing that like with, 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 with like Yoko, you know, that's mm. just the beginning mm. of it. Mm. You know, we're going to see that with the soul wallet. I'm putting it out there already. You know right. what I mean? Um, but the idea is that like, we are even like, even the, the this hidden idea of venture capitalism, who, who does that, mm. Mm. you know, you're going to find that like a, a black guy is going to go, yeah, you know, the CFO of Google is also invested in this. Mm. We're going to mm. do in the next five, 10 years, as much as music has integrated a celebrity, financial investments literally are also going to be mm. integrated. Mm. We're going to be talking as long as we have the right minds here, because we'll have the right technology, we'll have the right ideas, the right minds, mm. literally like th those relationships are now going to be open to everybody. Yeah. There's been people who've been hogging them. But things are going to be open to everybody because the creative world is literally is is so is so the creative world is so educated about this space that they're going to go, yeah, you've got your money, but you can't play here like that. Mm, mm. I mean, an influencer is already telling you that. An influencer is going, yeah, yeah, I see you've got the money, but my audience doesn't do that. Mm, mm. An influencer already has, can tell you that, yeah, right? Yeah. Now, when you start having groups of creatives who kind of who build revenue through an audience, and now you know you coming into like um, 
like a, a building in in Sanson mm-hmm. and you go you know that group of artists owns that yeah. you, the type of audience that literally goes the pride that that audience sure, has sure. it's that I always ask myself if you're a German guy mm. and you hear people black people going oh, I want a PM I want a Mercedes mm. and you're like and you're like it kind of in your subconscious even if you don't yeah. own it you kind of yeah. go I know I'm a German mm. you know mm. there's that layer of pride that we don't yeah. have that yeah. there's nothing that we are wearing that we are driving that we are doing mm. that we are buying that we can go you know uh, you know this mm. thing mm. we come in we got bad too we've got more fire we've got like we've got drip mm. you know but like we also haven't built the confidence of actually like totally even endorsing ourselves mm. that's how far we are from that understanding sure. but once you start building things that people go oh we see the story and you know that's why like you find drip batu they they like stories of 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 individuals who've mm. done well mm. you know so and 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 we need to support that yeah. but still the black mind is still not too too comfortable they can support it but uh, over nike over this you know mm. you still like kind of like but immediately when you have a story of of a collective of black people yeah. that are doing well and you are walking in their space and you don't put a face to that this mm. guy is i think maybe and i'm i'm assuming now cuz sure. i don't know y'all black folks y'all black folks be crazy <laughs> <laughs> but like um but like immediately like you can do so much y'all black folks are like but still you never did this mm. you never did mm. this mm. but when they meet it is a collective and you are dancing to the guy's song and you and like it's run probably because mm. right now when you're investing you're not investing in the artist running it you're investing in his proper people running whatever they're running you yeah. buy a bank you buy, do whatever yeah. when those things start happening and you go yeah it's also p- partly owned by this group and that group and that group mm. there's a sense of it's a collective of black people so maybe black people will also resonate to that and that's another conversation we need to have because I know that like guys like the or like the gal mm. um I'm Sheldon from Legends those guys have worked super hard sure. for us not to stand up proud and go mm. I'm going to buy I, I see the night shoe but I'm going to buy this mm. you know mm. I'm actually going to you know for us not to confidently be posting that shit yeah. um in this there's a problem with us not with them sure you sure. know so can we convince our own people if it's a collective of us that own it mm. because these are real conversations you know you mm. you have to post and say hey oh blind and so shit but can you go in and buy and i've got nike i've got here yeah. because i know that like like i want answer my call but at least he's got my number right yeah. but i don't know who's running nike right so that's another thing about us there's something wrong with us as black people not with like and even if like our drip legends Sheldon even if something happens in their business mm. I mean Nike literally before they had Jordan they were also close to being bankrupt mm. 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 so what if something happens to them we're going to make it as if Nike hasn't gone through that before sure do you know what I mean yeah I'm just saying you know so there's something wrong with us we're not mm. patient with it with, mm. with, with 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 our own progression mm. we literally want to act like we compare our progression to what we're reading about global stories but then we 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 discount things like yo there's a whole jordan thing where like yo if that jordan thing never worked if the deal with jordan never worked with mm. nike they were they probably they weren't going to exist mm. you're a dick yeah so it's all these things that like we we don't factor in when we hear stories about our own businesses that yeah. that are started by black individuals that yeah. we go ooh this this and a third but like now what we doing we saying you you bind to drip through this group or you'll bind to nike mm. if nike is going to come into this country and we literally saying yeah but like you want to come in but like you can't come in because because not because of the government said like you have to have this black mm. it's because we've told the government that we've got the money for night night can't come in because we the ones that are we already like supporting trip da, 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 da. Mm. but mm. if night comes in they come in with our rules mm. 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 not that we don't want night but sure. because we don't have rules we only have government rules yeah and the government rules are not always our people's rules sure they don't fit to us you know they're very commercial mm. but if the commercials are told to what we've built mm. then and that's the challenge with South Africa in closing. Sure. It's not it's not abrogated it's not it's just that we don't make our own rules. That's it. That's what's gotten us poor. But we don't have money to make our rules also. Mm. So, mm. you know, if we don't then let's go with the comfort. You know when black people go, "Hey, 
president. At least you know what I mean? That literally is guys going, you know, we just don't have rules, but at least the white guys had rules. We understood the rule. People are saying that I understood the rule. I couldn't go here and here and here and here. But at least I was eating. You know what I mean? When you give people freedom but they don't have rules, they literally like go, but just because I wanted freedom doesn't mean that I don't want you to tell me uh, or at least like I don't want you to actually like build things where I can actually benefit. Mm. So what essentially that statement that goes, at least they're saying mm. we knew the rules, but we're at least eating, you know? Mm. Right now we're saying that we don't even know the rules. Am I going to even get the tender? Am I even mm. going to, oh, why did that guy do that? Why is the white guy doing that? Why is the, why, why is the economy still running? We don't even know the rules, mm. but we're free. Mm. And that's, and, 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 and that's, it's like raising a child. It's like when you don't supervise your child and they do whatever they want to do, they're never going to respect you and say, but you taught me this, or you showed me this way. Mm. And I chose and I went that way and I messed up. Mm. It's even, they tell you this when you're in like counseling, they go, you got to supervise your kids because they want you to supervise them. Mm. Even though they go, no, no, no. They want sure. you to supervise them. So freedom over rules. It's interesting. What do we take? Hmm. It's who makes the rules, maybe. Freedom over the rules that we make. Mm, mm. Bro, you know what? We're going to have to save. I wanted to ask you um, some other questions. Yeah. We got to page one and then we, then we solved the revolution. So, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, we, the, but the yeah. book is the book literally is, yeah. is, 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 talks about energy, to be quite frank. Yeah. It talks about energy to be in a space to make your own rules. Sure. The book was called an energy book. It was an energy book. And they asked me to go. And Penguin said I must change the title mm. and go Hip Hop Pioneer, whatever. They, I don't even know the title myself I, I right know, now. I know the you feeling, know. bro. Yeah. yeah. So the book literally... They, were, they, they wanted you to follow the rules, right? They, they wanted yeah, me to yeah, follow yeah. the rules according to what they knew. Yeah, But exactly. I was like, it's not enough money for me to argue. Yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly, you, exactly. You also got to know what you're fighting bro, for. Bro, do you know how I fought to make this cover the cover of this book? Because what we did here was... We did the graffiti on this wall. Yeah. So I got a graffiti artist to paint delusion on a wall. Then I sat on the wall. I sent this cover to them. I, I did it all mm -hmm. myself. And I was like, this is the cover. They were like, no, that's not a book cover. Because I, because maybe the money was, was more to me than it seems to be for, like, hey, you got a fintech platform now, man. You're, you're, basically, you're basically sorted. But I fought this for like three weeks, bro. Yeah, and, yeah. and they finally relented. I was like... You don't know what my audience wants, yeah, yeah, but yeah, they were still like, no, yeah. this is what a book cover is. For me, my book is really like Helen. It's really Helen, you know. Mm, um, mm. And shout out to her. She, yeah, she's yeah. so deeply knowledgeable about yeah, the culture. Yeah. Excellent mm. writer. So My book is really like a tribute to Helen's mm, contribution, mm, to be quite mm. frank. No, she's... Um, she's um, um, so I wasn't really... It's, it, it, I wasn't really like... Um, uh, invested in this in the idea of yeah, a book but yeah. it's really a tribute to helen's greatness in for my sure, view for sure um and i was just the vessel for that no, you know absolutely. what i mean we're gonna give a copy of slicker the, i'll tell you the title it's called slicker the life story of a hip-hop pioneer drop a comment below or email hello at com, and we will send you the first person the first person who sends that email will get a copy of the book uh bro we we've been talking over the generation so yeah. this won't be the last time we talk yeah, uh on whichever platform it is yeah, yeah. but shout out to you for for this work for the work you're doing and um all the best going forward in the future oh wow yeah ask me your last question i was gonna ask you how you're feeling about about for guys who are selling books i don't believe you don't know how to Sell education like this is how you do it anyway Please, yeah. you know <laughs> okay. there we go there we go we just know how to write the books the selling is all like i'm the seller so i must <laughs> yeah. know how to place it hey, you man. know what i mean uh yeah bro i was just gonna ask you how you're feeling about kenan because like um i guess i also don't get a lot of chance to talk about people who knew kenan in that time before he became super yeah. famous um and some of the rawness of that moment, but I still, I still honestly can't believe, you yeah. know, uh, what happened to him happened. And it's just like, it's just so sad. Um, and, and I often just like to talk to people who knew him back then. Yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling about um, it? 
I think I think firstly I feel I was fortunate that I got I got to spend the last moment with him hmm. um in December oh, you know wow. um and what um, was that like oh man you know so I think Keenan literally had beef that I that I that I that I chose Quest over him mm. you know as we were going out. <laughs> Of course, of course, Keenan is that guy. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah. Um, he's yeah. competitive. <laughs> um, so I think there was always that, like, he always wanted to show me. Yeah. You know, um, and his energy across the time has always been like uh, showing me. You know huh. what I mean? Um, <laughs> so even um, even him going out with Banan, you know, it's like mm. it's the energy of showing, you know, mm. I'm here now. You, you, know also, you also talk about Banan in the book and yeah, how you got yeah. to meet her, and that's yeah. an interesting yeah. story. But yeah. yeah. So he, he, his whole thing was like, it was like, you know, um, um, the guys I looked up to, I'm going to do it better than them. Oh, yeah. For and sure. I'm going to show it to them oh, also. Yeah. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? So for him, I was one of the guys he was showing. Interesting. You know what I mean? Mm. And I was aware of that, hmm. you know? And, um, and, but, you know, I, the, the way I am, I, I obviously feel I'm older than him. Mm. I am older than him. Mm. I was older than him still um in yeah. like in life terms yeah um so for me it, i always still saw him as a it, it's okay i actually wanted to do better mm. i wasn't a guy who was trying to say that my stuff overshadows everybody or yeah. my my achievements were like this small so you can go and fly yeah. so what he never understood is that like i wanted him to to show me mm. i wanted him to like i want Questa to do better than me mm. you know mm. i because i had engaged him I had engaged him literally like as, as a kid and I saw him and I saw his career. Mm. I even saw him when he was performing at the clubs one time and he was always performing looking down. And I went up to him backstage and yeah. I said, that's not how you perform. You literally yeah. need to face us. You, yeah. We are here. Why are you always looking down like yeah. this, you know? Yeah. And, um, and he, he worked on his stage. He gave me, you know, and this is, that's just like, it's poetic. It's like the last time I spent time with him, mm. it was, um, he was performing a, a, a show called The Unplugged, and... That was that SABC one yeah. show that you did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, in the whole season, he performed better than anybody. Mm. Mm. And his last words were like, and if anyone can do better than that, I'd pay. You know, he said something <laughs> yeah. like, you know, he yeah. said something cocky like that, mm. you know. Mm. Um, but the irony is that, like, my, my engagement with him was how you perform. And now he's on my show mm -hmm. and he gave me the best performance on my show. Yeah. Um, in all our interviews, when I'd meet up with him, it would always be like, bro, relax, <laughs> you know, relax, stop. Why you gotta, you know, even with this stuff with Casper, I'm like, mm -hmm. he'd be like, yo, you know, it's like, I said, I always say, but you the one that's starting it. You the agitator. Why do you like doing that? He said, you are, you know, stick. Like, I must press the button. I must press the button. <laughs> mm. I said, but you causing this because now you want to talk. You want to tell me about it. And you know, with Keenan, if you you either with him or not. Mm. If you're not with him, forget it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So me and him had that contentious relationship of mm. I wasn't buying into his step. I'd mm. tell him, nah, B, you know. <laughs> but I think out of respect, when I'd call him, mm. yo, Keenan, let's go. Like you know. Okay, let me check my date. The coach, sure, yeah, this, sure. this. We'd always hook up because there was just a genuine respect. Mm. But I wasn't buying into his mm. stuff like everybody else does. I was sure. a little bit harder on him, you sure. know. But I think the last interview, he just was like, um, he was just, um, he wasn't trying to be hard. Mm. He wasn't trying to show me. It looked like it, something had something yeah, had changed in those yeah. final, final, the yeah. last year. Like he was very much also like trying to. He was also trying to tell me who I am, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Like, which he literally wasn't, you know, I, he always wanted to show me, mm. but like, it was just like, yo, this is who you are. You know what I mean? Type in the game. This is yeah. what you've meant in my life, Definitely. blah, blah. Definitely. We had a, we had a real conversation about how he wanted to, how he wanted to kind of change his life. Mm. Every conversation I had with Keenan, he was always trying to be something bigger mm. than he, than he was in that moment. He was always trying to make me say, recognize that i'm here also yeah. so the conversations were not always authentic sure they were always like so this conversation for the first time there was love in the conversation mm. it wasn't like a, it was that respect and i know all the times we were talking it's like i also i'm also flattered that i was that benchmark that he's sure. like i must show him too mm. you know what i mean mm. um and um and and fortunately I'm, i was here for the show yeah i was here for the show I was applauding. 
I was calling him back, yo, what's up with this? I need to talk to you about it because I was here for the show. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, the last time we chatted, there was a lot of love. My son was with him, was around also. Mm. And um, and it was just, he was just, he never, he put his guards down with me. Um, yeah. And he gave me an incredible performance mm. also. Mm. We're going to close up the year with an Amapiano performance because um, on, on, the show was going on till December. Mm. But we were like, nah, this guy, he did it, you know? Yeah. So, um, so I think that like, um, it was full circle. Even the moment that I spent with the last moment, that I spent with him was full circle mm. and um, mm. and that means something maybe yeah. in, our, in our lives uh, maybe I also had to just experience that because this kid was sitting yeah. in my back seat like a couple of years ago mm. you know and mm. now he's a superstar and I'm celebrating him and I constantly celebrate him yeah. and um, and I go relax I'm not competing with you I'm yeah. not there I'm not in that game you know sure, what I mean sure. um, but I want you to win you know and the last time we said I think he acknowledged that and um, and um, yeah man um, he's he's He's, he, his family have, has, has, have lost the person, but we engaged in him with the content and the music. Mm. Um, we've, lo we've just lost the consistency of that incredible art. Mm. You know, um, I think that the, fa the, the loss is heavier for the family because mm. they woke up like speaking every day, but we've just lost an energy yeah. and, 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 and future work that would have come. Mm. And, um, and for sure, you know, it's, it's definitely something that's going to be, uh, um, the gap is there. He literally, I, I, in, in closing what I want to say, when Levi Matosa passed to I literally mm. was fortunate to engage with her in many instances. She even featured on a song that we worked with. Um, I'd see her on stage and I'd be like, geez, it was incredible. And I always used to go, and when she passed, I said, who's going to fill in these shoes? And when Keenan passed, I said, Wait, I was looking for a girl. Keenan actually was that. You know, Brenda Farsi mm. was mm. there, mm. you know, like Keenan, I've been looking for a girl, mm. you know. Mm. You can argue Kelly Kumalo, you know, has got her things too, and she's also hard on stage. But like, I was looking for a girl. Sure. But Keenan was the drama, the entertainment, mm. the arrogance, the music. Yeah. He was everything that, like, um, a label, literally, if you were standing from the outside, you'd go, who? And, 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 and Brenda Fassi, that superstar thing. And when Keenan passed, I said, why didn't I, that's what he's been all the mm, time. Mm, mm, Do you know what I mean? Mm. But that's how life goes. You know, we don't yeah. see people for who they are when they're with us. Only when they're absent, we see it, you know? True. Bro, I think that's a poignant note on which to end it. Uh, thanks for coming through. Thank you, my bro. Um, and see you next time our paths bring us together. Hey man, congratulations and I'm glad you're still doing, you're of still course, doing bro. this. Um, once again, it goes back as, 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 as Keenan was trying to show me. Um, it's like, um, I remember Mac G saying, yo, I got to work with you. Da, da, da. Yeah. And like, he's just like opened up the tap and like this thing is so big. And, Absolutely. you know, um, people literally look at Mac G's numbers and they stop doing what they wanted to do. Mm. And I'm saying, you know, that's not what, you, that's not how you do it. Yeah. Mac G is doing what he needs to do. Mac mm. G is almost like, in a way, trained to do this thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. He's a radio guy. He's good. Mm. He's got the audience. Um, Mac G is a huge contributor to this thing. Yeah. And, um, but like, don't stop your thing because you're looking at numbers. And if you're looking at Mac G and you stop your thing, then you are doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm. And mm. for me to be here with you doing this still, you know, for me, it's like, um, this is what you need to keep doing. You know, you're doing no it doubt. for the right reason. We here for the show, you know, we here for your show. I'm here for Mac G's show. I'm here yeah. for Tito, El Tito's show. I'm here for every young guy that's going, I want to tell our stories mm. and I want, mm. I know how to engage with the subject and, get stuff that was never going to come out yeah i mean some of the stuff that el tito's about to drop on his platform um when i was talking to him some of the interviews he has mm. they they they're gonna just it's just gonna mess up like the scene yeah um but like there's information that's in it also Definitely. you know but if we don't do it who's gonna do it 
Yeah. You know, so I'm here for the show until I go. We That's appreciate story, that, bro. We appreciate that. We appreciate you know? that, and and we we drew inspiration from from the stuff you were doing. You Thank know? you. Um, we're going to go on for like two hours now. Yeah. So I was going to start with Slicker and Life and all of that, but we appreciate it, bro. Thank you. And thank you for gracing the platform. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. We out here. I hear you.